we have now spent a lot of time discussing circuit analysis, but uh, there was something missing in those circuits the uh, some important elements like capacitors and inductors ok. Uh, so, everything we did so far was analysis of uh, memory less circuits meaning you do not have either capacitors or inductors. If you do not have that if you have only resistors and uh, linear control sources and so on any branch quantity at any instant in a circuit depends only on the inputs at that instant ok. The history is not required it is required only for capacitors and inductors right because the capacitor voltage is the integral of current up to that time. So, what happened to current previously affects the voltage at this time. Similarly, uh, the inductor current is dependent on uh, uh, inductor voltage across history up to that instant ok. So, those are circuits with memory and to analyze that we have to go through solving differential equations ok. So, far everything we did was uh, algebraic equations and sometimes they look complicated, but uh, they were in terms of matrices and after all they are still algebraic equations ok. So, what we will do for the next few classes is to discuss the circuits with capacitors or inductors. Now, we will not deal with differential equations in the same general way that if you take a mathematics course in differential equations that will be in a different manner ok. There the focus will be on solving like many different types of uh, differential equations. For us the very simplest type of differential equation will do ok. We will only be looking at first and second order and from there you can kind of generalize to higher order. But we will look at those things in quite a lot of detail because we want to get some insights into the behavior of circuits ok. What is the voltage here? V s R 2 by R 1 plus R 2 and this V s could have any arbitrary shape with respect to time and that will simply become that V s of t times the same ratio right. What is it in this case? How would you tell? First of all, if I have this arbitrary Vs of t, it becomes quite difficult, ok. So, first we will start with constant Vs. constant with time which is also referred to as DC. I think you are familiar with this term it stands for uh, direct current actually, but it is quite common to say DC voltage or DC current although that is redundant ok. So, what it means is that that quantity is constant with time and the counterpart is alternating current which uh, varies with time in some specific way ok. So, in general uh, the input can vary in any any way right any possible way. So, let me remove this R 1 since there is only one resistor in the circuit I will call this R ok. So, how would we go about solving for this? What do we do first to solve for any there is only <laughs> one answer right KCL and KVL ok. So, this V s equals the sum of the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the capacitor and let us say it is the voltage across the capacitor that I am interested in. So, I will write everything in terms of that variable V c ok. So, in that case what is the current? What is the current through the capacitor? C times the time derivative of V c and exactly the same current flows there as well ok. So, the voltage drop across the resistor is R c ok. What are the dimensions of R times c? time it has to be right uh, because you have time here. So, that has to cancel with that to give you a voltage. So, this has some dimensions of some time and actually it is a significant quantity as we will see soon. So, what does KVL say now? As usual I will put the variables on the left side and 
the input which is a constant on the right side ok. So, this is what we have and V c itself is time dependent although V s is a constant ok. I am sure you have solved uh, equations of this type what is the solution to an equation of this type. So, we will look at it in some detail ok. Inductors they work in exactly the same way. Uh, so, I would not spend a lot of time on this ok. Then let me take the familiar one also we know the differential equation for this V c here ok and here I will write it for I L ok. So, this one we know I am going to write it right away. This is the voltage across the capacitor, this is the voltage across the resistor and the total equals V s ok. Now, in this case what do we have? V s minus I L R which is the voltage across the inductor is L times d l by d t ok. So, if I rearrange this I get L by R time derivative of I L plus I L equals V s by R. Now, you can see that the differential equations are exactly the same in the R L circuit and the R C circuit. The coefficients are of course, different they are dependent on the specific components, but the equations themselves are the same which means that the solutions will be also the same. Okay. So, what I will do is discuss the R C circuit in great detail and the solutions for the R L circuit can be obtained by comparing the terms to that of the R C circuit. Okay. So, first we will uh, try to do it with I mean even easier case with V s equal to 0. Okay. So, essentially we will try to solve for this circuit this is I have set V s to 0 and I have R and C. So, what happens to this voltage right that is the question. Now, of course, if that voltage were initially 0 then clearly nothing will happen because there is 0 current through the resistor and 0 current through the capacitor no change at all ok. So, if I have So, V c being 0 forever is a possible solution ok, but let us say V c initially was some other value if uh, V c were to be some other value then what happens there are many ways we can uh, think about this. First let us say this was some uh, 5 volts or something ok. And I will define I like this. I c also versus time. What is the initial value of I c? It has to satisfy K V L right. What is it? Minus 5 volts by R ok. So, it will start from some negative value ok. So, that means that uh, what, uh, what happens to V c initially? It has to fall right because I c the way I have written it is negative. So, current is flowing upward through the capacitor. So, that means that the capacitor voltage will have to fall ok. What is the rate of change of capacitor voltage? It is uh, I c by c right. So, it will start falling I will show a kind of segment just to show that what will be the slope there initially it will be 5 volts by R c ok, but of course, it would not go in a straight line like that because as soon as it drops what happens to the current? 
the current itself is related to the voltage but uh, as this voltage drops as this voltage falls the magnitude of the current decreases okay so it's still negative current but of a smaller magnitude so what happens to the slope here slope will decrease okay so it will start becoming shallower and shallower okay so you can expect that it will do something of that sort okay as the voltage across the capacitor decreases the current through it also decreases so the rate of change of voltage goes on decreasing okay so that's what gives you a curve of this type so graphically you could even without having heard of uh, derivatives or uh, differential equations you could have got this curve right and then if you work out for ic it will also do something of that sort okay so the important thing we can uh, take from here is that the initial uh, voltage is of course 5 volts and the initial slope is 5 volts by rc for this circuit okay